the story of Central Park begins with the passage of the bond initiative um, a few years back. And when we were deciding what to do best with our facilities in town, um, we really had to make a decision about whether we we're going to extend the life of Carpenter or we we're going to extend the life of East Lawn as well too. After a lot of deep work with our architects, we decided that it would really be cost efficient for us to end the life of those buildings and to bring a new building on board. Um, after surveying our facilities, we found that we could utilize the old um, Central Middle School, um, Central High School as well too, and refurbish it into a modern elementary. Um, the idea to theme it as a STEM elementary really came from a lot of the macro and micro initiatives that were happening in the nation, the state, and the region, and also in our town. We know that Midland exemplifies um, the STEM subjects, and we wanted to make sure that we could harness uh, that enthusiasm and also prepare our young students in those fields. So we decided to make not just a normal elementary, but to create a STEM elementary, and the idea more from a napkin to the building that you're going to see highlighted um, throughout this video. Fibonacci is an Italian mathematician and he came from Italy and he worked with numbers and patterns and we see these patterns in nature. As you walk through the halls of Central Park Elementary you'll notice many other panels. There'll be panels that have math formulas on them, they'll have scientific equations, and this learning lab along this hallway has many different types of panels to increase children's curiosity on how math works and science work. Behind me you'll see one of our learning communities and this is our kindergarten learning community and every single learning community highlights five separate classrooms. Each classroom has an innovative entrance way into the classroom. It's a, it's a clear garage door. That garage door can be closed, it can be opened. We really encourage our teachers to keep it open so that the STEM studio and the makerspace are extensions of their classrooms. We've just entered a makerspace. This is the second grade makerspace. This is an area where students can leave their classroom and do some thinkering. This is where they tinker and they think and they incorporate the engineering design process where they ask themselves a question, they explore, and then they create perhaps a model. It might be in the area of science, it may be in the area of social studies, it may be in the area of math. We're standing in front of the Media Center here at Central Park Elementary. Behind me, you'll see a variety of things that we have as far as unique features. We have a special uh, feature that it's an automatronic, and when we turn that automatronic, we're able to um, hear about those features that we're viewing through the window. We're able to um, give students hands-on experiences that involve maybe exploration and discovery, for example, um, maybe working with a 3D printer, or maybe doing an archaeological dig. So it depends on what subject area and curriculum we're focusing on, but the Media Center will connect to all curriculum areas in a hands-on way. Central Park has a separate gymnasium from the cafeteria. We're standing here on a rubberized flooring, and along the flooring you'll find all kinds of geometric shapes, measurement, because we try to include STEM throughout the day in all learning experiences. Right now I'm standing in front of one of the various quotes that we have throughout Central Park. These quotes are here on our walls to be thought-provoking and inspirational for all of our students. We have them in all of our areas, in our maker spaces, in our gateway areas, and also in all of our um, auxiliary and specials classes. This space can be utilized as a gallery walk of artwork, a presentation practicing space, or it can be used for our music students. We have an exposed ceiling with wires that run throughout as well as the plumbing and everything is labeled so that students understand the working parts of the building. Because we knew that Central Park was going to be a big building, it houses over 800 kids currently, we wanted to make sure that the building um, was able to promote um, learning communities amongst our students so they didn't feel like they were going to get lost in the numbers. So a main design feature that we developed was what we call learning communities. So each grade level has its own learning community and these are very innovative learning communities. They are all anchored by what we call STEM studios and maker spaces and each classroom has the ability to open up into that STEM studio or maker space. The maker spaces feature custom designs. They have polished concrete floors with drains in them, which are intended for when students make messes that they're easy to clean up. They have mobile and flexible furniture, and they also have pull down power so we can bring the power to the kids when they're doing their different experiments. 
Each of our learning studios, each of our learning communities is also anchored by a STEM outdoor learning space. We have three outdoor learning spaces, one that anchors K-1, one that anchors 2-3, and one that anchors 4 and 5. Those outdoor learning spaces have equipment that immerses the students and highlights the curriculum that they're learning in those levels. For example, in K through one, there's a unit called the sun, the moon, and the stars, and you'll see highlighted out in that maker space or in the outdoor learning space that we have a planetarium, we have planets that the kids can play on. Um, and again, each of those features are designed so that the classroom is really not just confined within those four walls. It can take place in our STEM studios, our maker spaces, and also outside as well too. We're trying to promote hands-on inquiry-based learning where students really aren't in the old traditional sit and get mode.